How are ah. you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. <laughs> cool. Thanks for joining me. Now, you are also one of the folks who have been on the DDO team, or were on the DDO team for a, a very long time, and worked for, uh, well, I guess, how long did, when did you start? Uh, I was on the original launch, um, first uh, as QA, and then as a, um, a starting designer, where I got to fix a lot of the bugs I ended up posting. Um, and then was with the project, I think, for about seven years. Um, through the original launch and the second launch. I can't even remember everything that you've worked on. I mean, I remember I used to interview you back on DDO cast, and then when I started working here, you were doing everything from quests to raids to even like items and systems work and yep. all that. I mean, yeah. You just did everything. I was mostly content for a long time, and then I kind of gradually worked up the systems and building monster AI. Yeah. And you are one of those folks who started in QA, ended up getting a job on the team. Yeah. How did that process go for you? Uh, it was <laughs> pretty uh, ad hoc. Um, yeah. One day you're in your QA, and another day you're a designer. But clearly, you had to have you know build up the skill set that it takes to do the the coding work, that sort of thing. Right? The yeah, the scripting. I'm well. Starting on content, uh, we had pretty good content tools, like for dungeon building. Um, you know, you could throw together uh, a you know deco with those cell room sets and do lighting and place monsters. Uh, Pretty quickly, and you know, do you know, pretty general gameplay like, frankly, like a lot of the dungeons you would see in the harbor or in our, you know, kind of the early first couple of years. A DDO was just like you know, guy could sit down with the tools and do that stuff pretty easily. But as the years went on, like we started to do a lot more complicated things, like um, I've got what's the the uh, the Zorian Madness right, quests right. for. Hey, you where, worked on those. I, I worked. Uh, I, I worked on the Hound of Zoriat. Um, I'm trying to remember uh, Rick, Rick's form handle. He was the one who did all the... Purple Foods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Purple Foods. Purple yeah. Foods. He did those. Um, yeah, I did the giant mind flare that was at the end of the... the oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, with the homing, yep. the still homing spheres. The, uh, Yalthoon still one of the favorite mo mobs in the game, I think. Yeah, yeah. He came out well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he sure did. Yeah. So, a, do you remember like... What quests and raids can people associate? I think the, my first dungeon that like I got a significant reaction from was Zorian Cipher, um, and then I did Jungle of Kyber. This is way back. Oh, really? You're the bottom three guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. Um, yeah, it was like it's like so back when we called the modules. Um, <laughs> yeah, really? Like mod one, I did Zorian Cipher, Jungle of Kyber, and I'm trying to think if I did another one. Um, and then I got bounced to the to the popcorn team, where and like I, I did some of the um, necropolis popcorn dungeons. They were very popcorny, <laughs> and there are many of them, <laughs> and way too much undead. Uh, sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> um, and then like um, right. So and then mod three, I did the, the Marilith was my first raid. I got to do the Marilith. Um, now, I, I just want to stop here because someone is saying in chat that I haven't properly introduced you. Uh, your name is uh, Brent, and you were a content designer yeah. uh, for DDO for a long time. Uh, currently not on the DDO team, but uh, still with Turbine, clearly. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember what your forum name Torque. was. Torque. Torque. Okay, Torque. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Um, and also, I just want to make sure I, I just moved uh, my microphone up a little bit, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah. So you were saying you worked on Zorian Cypher and Vault of Night. Uh, part three, Jungle yep. of Kyber and all that. Um, and then you worked even up to uh, including, say, some of like the missing quests, Yalthoon and things like that. How did the process of making a dungeon change over that time? Because if I recall, we had a new physics engine and everything. Oh, we in the pathing yeah. system. Like, like, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's sort of... Uh, DDO had a very powerful scripting system, but it was very complicated and hard to learn, and it's not easy to debug. And basically, but like uh, just making dungeons and just the kind of the IP inspires you to try new things. Just the team just gradually learned uh, how to tap into that power. And we were able to do a lot more complicated things, and things with a lot more variety, and just got better over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Do you have a favorite bug? Favorite bug? So, um,. There were a bunch of them. Wow. Um, <laughs> so when we went to Japan, we would get, like, uh, our Japanese players, like, they could 
find the most amazing bugs. And I remember this guy going through this elaborate uh, series of steps to discover the super sky. That's what he called it, the super sky. And what he was basically doing is he figured out how to get outside um, the land block boundaries of like one of the town zones. And fundamentally, like, because um, um, DDO was actually based on the Ashran's call engine, like way back in yeah. its roots, the world was fundamentally this humongous flat mesh, uh, you know, this plane that like you could, you know, play with the topography, like, like you know, in the outdoor zones. But everything was out on that plane, like yeah. either in the ground as a dungeon or as a town. So if you looked at the real map, like you basically had all these isolated things and, and some of them when they, you know, things that wouldn't make sense geographically or next to each other, but because, you know, you travel through portals in DDO, it's very instant Yeah, space. it doesn't really matter where it is on this big plane but, because it's just, right. you're, you're teleporting to that but, but he got right? out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically a flat plane with a skybox, and he's running around basically, like, finding the outer edges of content, <laughs> and, and including content that's not in the game yet, like, wondering, like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was just... Uh, yeah, it was just funny how he kind of referred to everything. And we have a question in chat uh, asking if you know who made Whisper Doom. Um, okay, so the original Spider, like Whisper yeah, Doom, yeah. way back. Yeah. Like, oh God, I want to say Brendan. Um, I don't know. Remember his form handle? He was the writer. Um, so all the dungeons were made by pairs, yeah. and, and one guy was the writer and the dungeon quest story guy like all the text you see and the npc you talk to like like they're really in charge of the narrative aspect and and then there is the dungeon builder and they were basically building all the deco placing all the traps and the monster spawns and i don't uh, remember who built out the shells for those dungeons they were built way back before i even was on the project they already existed when i when i kind of jumped on and was testing bugs uh, but I want to say the writer might have been. I don't know. I kind of. I might have to do some digging to find out. I yeah, I know. It's, it's hard to, especially because you know it has been ten years, right? And yeah. People have worked on a lot of a lot of things ever since then. Uh, people are asking me since we're trying to identify who did what. The pit. Do you remember the pit? Oh yeah, uh, that that was my fault. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean it's, to be fair. Okay, so yeah, I could tell talk about how the pit came about. Yes, it, please it, do. It was pretty, pretty, please do. <laughs> pretty. All right. Um, so. Uh, Way back, like, we just launched DDO, and there were a whole bunch of dungeons, and, and like, and dungeons, I'm using the term very loosely, like, they were, they were ideas that were half-formed, um, had been made and discarded, because, like, people didn't have time to finish them, or they got moved on to other things that were higher priority, and, um, the lead designer at the time, Ken Troop, basically, like, looked at me and says, I want you to go through all these old dungeons that have been abandoned and make a list of the ones that we can salvage. So I made a list, and there were like 10 of them. Um, so the top of the list was Zorian Cypher, which was built on the bones of the E3 dungeon we demoed. Oh, okay. So, so like the, the little floor puzzle and like that split room, there's a floor puzzle, and you look down, and the, the two doorways that split you, that was all from the E3 dungeon. Like, nice, you know, the, nice. And you know, we built on top of that, and the Chaos Orbs were even supposed to be in the E3 dungeon, but like had been pushed. So when I found them, I put them right back in, and you know, we made Zorian Cypher. The bottom of the list was the pit dungeon, but Ken thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the only thing, the, the pit dungeon started as that central cylinder mm -hmm. with the ramps going down and all the traps, which like had a bug in them that like they didn't work right as you were going up and down. Like there was a vertical problem with how the trap detects work. So it was like way at the bottom of the list. We didn't want to do, we didn't want to like, we were like, we don't really, it's really hard to come up with something to do with this thing. Yeah. But he wanted us to work on it. So we worked on it. And what happened was I was working on probably Jungle of Kyber. And um, my co-designer, Joe Barry, the story guy, he kind of, he, he would often, like, get ahead of me. Because, like, he'd build up the story and the NPC and get all the pieces together. And I'd be, like, yeah. you know, trying to build all the deco and the visuals. And trying tuning. to do a vertical trap issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I mean, like, on Kyber, it was, like ambush city and i was trying to make the marilith like kind of do more things like you know the talk to you over the cliff and have these cameos so you kind of felt like you were racing with it um but anyway um so joe was kind of alone with the pit and he figured out how to copy pieces of dungeons um he, uh 
into other dungeons, and he went crazy with it. We actually cut three rooms off the pit. Oh, really? Yeah, the pit was humongous. Like, by the time I got there, it was like, we're going to have to write a manual for players to play this dungeon. It's so big. Which we ended up sort of doing. Yeah, we did. That that was Jared Sorensen. He was a great guy. Um, you, you, You can run into him at, like, PAX all the time. Um yeah, he wrote the manual for the pit. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the furnace rooms that w- those were the first dungeon that when I was learning like the first two weeks um, I was learning how to use World Builder our, our tool. I built those furnace rooms. Um, I built one furnace room actually, yep. and, and it was like tucked away, and it was it was just this one room with like you know kind of this you know vertical jumpy stuff and the steam geysers, and it was the first thing ever done, and it was kind of so he grabbed it and thrown it you know he copied it and thrown it on one section he'd found another room done another he did the lights out puzzle Mm -hmm. that's right the beginning um sort of regret putting a puzzle at the beginning of a dungeon (laughs) it's better on the side or and well it depends what you what you're going for but anyways it was lights out puzzle that was it was lights out it was lights out it was a good puzzle um but uh yeah um anyway by the time i got to it it was this humongous monstrosity and he had like done this complicated flow and we just at this like it was it was something like our third or fourth dungeon i mean we're all still pretty new to the job and we just we just wanted to finish it yeah and we did and it was not perfect by any means of the word but it was interesting <laughs> it's still i mean to this day it is it is really its own unique beast in the world of ddl yeah, so, yeah. It, it, i love how it appears in the most loved and most hated lists <laughs> yeah, like it appears on both well, surveys you're seeing that in chat and yeah. you know some people are like oh my god that's the guy who made the pit and there's some people are like this is the guy who made the pit right <laughs> yeah you know they're, they're seeing people saying i'm in the pit right now you know so uh, it's like i'm sorry yeah. and you're welcome <laughs> yeah, i'm sorry yeah. and you're welcome right yeah. so do you remember the name? Why it be called the Pit of Despair? Is it just we kind of knew we were like we knew it, we we knew it was like this is this is gonna be special. This will take a certain kind of fortitude. Yeah, right, <laughs> to, right. Like you know, that's because I would I I would get lost debugging it. <laughs> I'd be running around and like, where's that room again? Like I need to find this room with this bug in it, or like I'm just trying to get to the end to like do some work or just testing, and it just. So yeah, we we call it we call it the pit. <laughs> so let me uh, let me put you on the spot and say, if you were to make an epic or legendary pit, wow. what would that look like? Any ideas? Uh, See, here's my thought on it: is that first off, we would take the darkness from Rainbow in the Dark. So the pit would it would be like the pit, but okay. it would be completely dark, and you'd have to have a torch to get through. Oh my through god! It. <laughs> and then on top of that, you would be under the effects of a blindness uh, sort of spell effect that you could get rid of with a potion of blindness or whatever, but it comes back every 30 seconds. Jeez. So, you know, people are saying, <laughs> I've run the pit so many times, I can do it with my eyes closed. Let's see. Let's, Let's see. see. is sort of the idea. Well, you can always blind, get yourself blinded somewhere and go into the pit and find out for certain. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I guess blindness isn't permanent anymore. Uh, that that was also my fault. Like, I, I did some of the, I did some of the, like, the spell duration oh, stuff, right? like, way back. I was like, just stop some of the ridiculous stuff that like works in pen and paper because your dungeon master will find a way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for right, this to right. work but like yeah. systematically like you know permanent curse or i think curse even lasts through death or something yeah, it was right, it was right. it was just like yeah i mean you know it, it, it gives people stories to tell and I'm, I'm part of me is glad that stuff all happened but it, it was pretty hardcore Right, and now I you brought up something interesting, which was we did. I remember a big spell overhaul in 2011, maybe it was something yeah. like that, and that was largely you as well. Yeah, I mean, I often like, I, you know, I, I would be building content, and I often would s- struggle with some of the system stuff. Is that you know, if if things were kind of, I mean, it's like the D and D system is amazing, and it, like it's like part of our childhoods growing up playing this game, um, but. A lot of stuff out of the book that we loyally implemented, like when the game first launched, works really around like a, a dungeon master, like a narrative god, to like you know take these things and make a great story with them. But like when you throw them in the system, when the thing is just like it's it's a computer game and it's just a rule, and the rule is going to do what's going to do, even if that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had to, you know, we just tried to take the edges off some stuff, and you know, it was just you know a balance. Nice, oh, nice. Big balance pass. Can you think of the thing that took you the longest to do? 
Like the single... Well, the pit actually the, did. The pit. But it's like, a, how about a systems change, anything like oh. that, or a spell? Is it like, I spent a week on that one thing? I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, like, Aladrin did so much of the heavy lifting on systems. Like, I, I kind of, I pitched hit on systems. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if I really tackled <sighs> anything truly gnarly on systems. Um, the pits. I mean, certainly the pits got to be up there. Now, you, yeah. did you do raid work as well? Did yeah, yeah. No, I, I did. I did. Um, I did like half the raids. Um, I did the Merilith. Um, I didn't do the Storm Reaver. What's next? I did the. I did Sulamanes. I did the Hound. I did the Lord of Blades. I did the Time Raid. I did the shroud was was definitely a team effort, which yeah, is one yeah. of the reasons I think it ended up so good. But I did a lot, I did a lot of the gameplay in the shroud. Yep. Um, I did a lot of the epic passes, like I did the epic revamp on Vela. Um, am I missing no, anything? That sounds pretty good. Uh, so you did the uh, Demon Queen raid. Yep. And people are asking in chat, is the torque? Of Prince Rayu named after you? No, I, th I think it's more like torque, like you torque something. <laughs> it's more of like like you with a wrench, but I might have that wrong. Um, but no, it's not. It's not named after me. No, not to my knowledge, at least. <laughs> nice, nice. <coughs> All right. It was um, a really good item, though, if I remember. Was that the spell point item? You generate spell yeah, points? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. It, it was so good that when we were giving out our... We're, for our 10th anniversary on Monday, we are giving out a list of items, uh, like old raid items just from the history of DDO. Yeah, you know, yeah. Everyone can get one, right? Yep. Except for the torque. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not responsible for statting the torque. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the guy who made the pit. I'm obviously not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know... You, for a couple of years now, you've been working on some other parts of at, at Turbine, and you're currently, if I recall correctly, working on one of our mobile projects. Yeah, is that the one that we sort of have the word out on? Yeah, it's um, it's the, uh, Arkham Underworld. It's, yeah, yeah, Arkham it's, Underworld. It's, it's, okay, it's announced right. though, not yeah. not available. In yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, it is in beta. You can actually sign up for the beta right yep. now on ArkhamUnderworld.com. Yep. Um, what's it like switching gears to like that kind of? Well, um, so so DDO, I was I was pretty much content. Did a little bit of systems and did the AIs, which may, means I did a lot of the boss battles. So it still was a lot of content. Um, Zep, the, the um, sorry, that's like the like the, the yeah um, yeah. Arkham <laughs> Underworld is um, it, it's, it's okay. a tactical it's a tactical it's it's a tactical game where you like have armies of thugs and you have a super villain. And it, it's much more like um, it's much more of a strategy game, and I, I do like all I do like a lot of all the AI on it, yeah. and um, it, it's much more system work where like you know I'm, I'm dealing with the balance between like players and their armies and their defenses and, and that, and I don't get to do as much as the narrative stuff. Um, I get to do it a little bit because we have these crazy supervillains and they're such great characters to play yep. with, but um, yeah, it's not. I do I do kind of miss the full building the full narrative arc of a dungeon sure, sure. and those kind of making those moments fit together nice anything else you want to add here uh, uh i don't know, i probably need to get back to it but um yeah any questions well, i should also mention you did red fence or some of the red fence work right i did the capstone dungeon yeah you, you're the underwater combat guy yeah i remember that yeah i i, I mean Underwater combat wasn't really a system. That was the problem. Yeah. Like, it started as, let's make a cool dungeon. Which it is. It yeah, is a cool dungeon. Yeah, and yeah. it it, it yeah. got sort of marketed as a combat system or, like, a new gameplay mode, and I, I don't feel it ever really lived up to that. Um, we wanted to make it 3D, but, like, we just technically couldn't do it by the ship date. Um and so we are like we kind of told ourselves like yeah you know like DDO is you know it's it's you find it on the ground most of the time it's all right but it's it's sort of like I you know I love the visuals and the ambiance of that dungeon but like I don't you know like fighting underwater I don't feel like we really explored all that um but you know what's interesting I remember when it came out at the time you know and I was one of those folks who was pretty critical of it at the time but there's something that happens when something is first released, and then sort of the way it changes over time. You, when you look at, say, something like the Red Fens now, with both its heroic and epic, as opposed to when it first came out, mm -hmm. 
it has absolutely stood the test of time. That content is still is being run today. People still like it a lot. You know, in chat here, I'm seeing, hey, we need more of that. You know, if you had asked people right when it came out, do we need more of that? They might not have said that. But clearly, you know, when you're designing, you're not just designing for the moment, but you're designing for the long term. So. I, Epic, I actually had a, I, I did a lot of the kind of design pitching on the Epic. And Epic was a way to, like, we had so many dungeons that were good but flawed. <laughs> yeah. And, like, Epic was a way to, like, we could take a dungeon and we could kind of... Um, and, and this was this was definitely sold really well with the relaunch because we were we were about to like we were we were a game that had been out out for a couple of years and had an elder population but we were going to try to to you know bring in a whole bunch of new people under the free to play model so like we wanted a dungeon where like you know we wanted to be able to take a dungeon that says this is for you end game guys and at the same time say this is also for you you new people who are coming in and. It also let us like revisit content and just frankly fix a lot of stuff that needed to get fixed. Um, so yeah, uh, I hear you guys now have even beyond epic, like what we call yeah, legendary, legendary. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> CR thirty one plus dungeons. Right. So, so yeah. Yeah, 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 might as well. You know, always good to double yep. down on a. So that's the thing is we need both a legendary and an epic. So uh, I think we're gonna have to kidnap you and make you. Uh, work on that for the next six months. Yeah, I, I, I will. I would love to work on a DDO dungeon again. Yeah. Um, kind of busy right now, but yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, Never thank you very much for joining me. It was uh, thanks, awesome Jack. to talk to you. All right, but, thanks. All right. Uh, we, like I said, we're going to have more interviews.